Advanced Arduino boards like the Dua are often used to execute larger applications. This is due to their larger flash and RAM memories and their increased capabilities. Larger applications typically contain more defects and are harder to detect than in smaller applications. For this reason, debugging tools are important and essential. In this lecture, I'll show you a way to debug applications running on the Arduino Dua using Atmel Studio and the Atmel ICE debugger. The same set of tools can be used to debug applications running on other Arduinos as well, not just on the Dua. Let's begin! In this lecture, I'd like to give you a glimpse of how to do debugging session for the Arduino Dua using the Atmel ICE debugger programmer device. I gave you a similar demonstration with the Arduino Zero. I'd like to remind you that the Arduino Zero contains its own debugger chip, the uh, ETBG chip here, which provides the same kind of service as this box does, the Atmel ICE debugger. Because of the embedded debugger on the board, I didn't have to use an external device to do the same job. But in the case of the Arduino Duo and pretty much any other Arduino board without an integrated debugger, I have to use the external Atmel ICE debugger device. The process is also slightly different because the Atmel Studio IDE does not fully support debugging on a Arduino Duo. So the process is slightly different. I'm going to show you what the differences are. To get started, just note that the Atmel ICE debugger allows you to debug devices with different architectures. So it's got two ports, one for each architecture. One is SAM-based microcontrollers and the other one is AVR-based microcontrollers. The Arduino Duo is a SAM microcontroller, so you need to make sure that your cable is connected to the right port. So I'll connect that to SAM. Now when it comes to debug interfaces, the Arduino Duo comes with the JTAG connector, which is a 10 pin connector, two rows by five pins each, which will use this end of the cable to connect to. So just be careful of the orientation of the cable because there's no markings on the board to tell you which one of these pins is pin number one. And the only thing that you can use as a hint is a little white dot on the mask here. You can probably just barely see it, which indicates which pin is pin number one on the JTAG connector. So once you figure that out, you need to align the cable with the red ribbon on it, the red colored ribbon on it, and just plug it carefully onto the JTAG connector. And I've got to say that the cable does feel a bit fragile and very sensitive, so just be careful when you do the plugging in and then the plugging out not to, uh, to damage the cable. I don't know how easy it would be to replace it. <laughs> All right, so I just orient the device like that. Now, uh, the process begins first with the Arduino IDE. Because it seems that support for the Arduino Duo and the debugging functionality is not uh, completely there in the Atmel Studio, what you need to do first is to use the Arduino IDE and compile the sketch that you want to debug and also upload it onto the board. Then you'll grab the debug files that the Arduino compiler, the Arduino IDE compiler produces and you use those files inside the Atmel Studio to continue with the debugging session. So let's demonstrate. I've got my Dua debugging example, which is the exact same sketch that I used for the Arduino Zero debugging example. And all I'll do here is to up, uh, compile and upload in one go. So let's compile and upload. I hope I selected the right target. Let's see how it goes. 
Oh, I didn't. Let's try that again. So, yep, this got to be the doer connected to the program import. And the port here is COM11. All right, let's try again. So what I'm doing now has got nothing to do with the Atmel ICE debugger. The doer is communicated to my, with my computer via the <laughs> via what should be the program import. So let's try again one more time. I've got the doer connected to my computer via the programming port, and I've got doer selected via programming port, and programming port is COM3. So compile and upload the sketch. And what's important here is to be able to see the messages that appear in the monitor here. So let that finish and then go back. All right, so the uploading is done now. So what you need to do next is to scroll back up the output here in the console to go back to the compiler output, not the upload process, but the compile process. And that happens around here. So at the end of the compilation process, you need to find out the location of the temporary files. So that is here. I need to copy this. Oops. I'll try that again. It's not easy to do this on the touchpad I'm used to a mouse. <laughs> One more time. So I need all the way up to here. So this is a temporary location for where, where the compiler outputs files from the compilation step. So bring up a new page, so a new um, Windows Explorer. And I'll paste that location in here and hit enter. And there we go. So out of these files, this elf.elf file is the file that contains the debug data. Basically, it's a version of the sketch that the debugger can understand. So I'll copy the bin file as well, the, the binary output of the compiler. And I'll just put it here. The only reason I do this is that so I have a copy of the um, compile version of the binary file in a place that will not be overwritten. It's not a temporary location, it's my project folder. So now that I have the ELF file, I can go into Atmel Studio and use the debugger in Atmel Studio. In Atmel Studio, I'm going to go to File and then open object file for debugging. So the .elf file we produced in the Arduino IDE is the object file for debugging. So that's a file that I want to open for this debugging session. So select the object file to debug. Let's go to my desktop. Desktop, uh, I've got my Arduino examples and the do a debugging example and this is the dot you know, .elf file that contains my object data. And project name and location, I'll just keep the default settings as they are. Next. So here I need to select the device that I'm debugging, the target device. So that is the microcontroller on the Arduino Duo board, which is the SAM some three X8E microcontroller. I should be able to just search in here for this. So some three X, there you go, three X8E. So that's my target device. I'll select that and click on finish. Okay, make some room in my interface here. If you look up in the tool selection, I've, I've got the 
target device already selected. I did it in the previous step, but there is no tool selected. So I'll click on the tool and select my debugging tool. So that is the Atno ICE and the interface I'll be using is JTAG. All right, no need to worry about anything else. We can just save all that. Now the next thing to do is to find the source code for the sketch that I'm debugging. So I've got that on my desktop. I do new examples, debugging example, and here is the source code in our file. So I'll double click on that. And now I'm ready to start the debugging. I can set uh, breakpoints like this, for example. I can get a message action to be printed. So I can say uh, at line 31, or you can hopefully come up with a more useful message to print out here. I can print out the value of the counter value at this point and continue execution instead of stopping. So close that and just hit on the start debugging button or hit F5 on your keyboard. And uh, the debugger is now on, you can see activity. I've got output from the debugger at line 31. You can pause, you can bring up windows that contain information about the state of the processor, for example, or you can go to uh, debug windows, oops, debug windows and look for, let's see, have a look at the registers, for example, just like in the Arduino Zero example, all these things are now possible via the Atmel ICE debugger module. And I can continue with F5. Right, when the debugging is running, then you can't get a memory printout I can stop the debugger here. And while we're still here, let's have a look at the device programming tool. So in device programming tool, I've already got my tool and the device selected and I can apply the interface, the JTAG interface, and I can check and interrogate the connected device, get its signature. So this is the signature of the uh, Atmel SAM 3x8e microcontroller and from here I can get device information. So I can interrogate the device and learn about its features. So I've got a x8e and I can get information about its memory, RAM size, the voltage range, things like that, operational details about this microcontroller. I can also use the Memories tab to do things such as erase the chip or reflash it. So here, for example, with this capability, with this option, I can pick up a binary file, or a binary file that I copied earlier from the Arduino IDE output, and I can open that and then program that onto the microcontroller using now the Atmel ICE debugger slash programmer through the JTAG interface. So there you go. What I've just done is to reflash the microcontroller with the same sketch as uh, the one that I compiled in the Arduino IDE, but this time through the ICE programmer. You can verify anything binary that is compatible with the microcontroller, you can upload to the microcontroller using the Atmel ICE programmer. So this way I skip the compilation step. If I have existing binaries of sketches that I want to quickly upload to the microcontroller, I can use this programming tool to do so very quickly. Okay, so that was a quick demonstration on how you can set up your debugging session for an Arduino Duo inside Atmel Studio using the Atmel ICE debugger programmer.